at any point did she turn into coma stage and when she signed the election commission's papers was she conscious and who are the people she was in touch with who were physically interacting with her during the treatment time doctor to put an end to all these controversies why don't you release the cctv footages Why no photographs have been released of the patient, Madam Chief Minister? She underwent physiotherapy actually because many of the press releases are coming from Madam Chief Minister. Madam Chief Minister, 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 பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டது அவங்களுக்கு எந்தவித கால் எடுத்தார்களா என்று உங்கள் சந்தேகம் குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் எவ்ரிபடி ஐ எம் டாக்டர் பாலாஜி ப்ரொஃபசர் ஆஃப் மினிமல் ஆக்சஸ் சர்ஜரி அட் மெட்ராஸ் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் ஹூ வாஸ் அப்பாயிண்டட் எஸ் தி கவர்மெண்ட் கோஆர்டினேட்டர் டு கோஆர்டினேட் த ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஹானரபிள் ஃபார்மர் சீஃப் மினிஸ்டர் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு madam selvi j jayalalitha the basic uh, reason for this press meet is to dispel some of the rumors that are afloat as to regards what was the treatment to give, given to her what was her condition during her admission and so i present before you dr richard bale the specialist from united kingdom who had come to treat our honorable chief minister of tamil nadu madam jayalalitha and dr babu abraham senior consultant in uh, icu and critical care to tell to all of us to tell to all of you what was the treatment and what was the uh, condition of our former chief minister honorable madam jayalalitha dr my name is sam daniel from ndtv my question is if you can give a timeline on when did ms jayalalitha or when all did she turn unconscious at any point did she turn into coma stage and when she signed the election commission's papers was she conscious and who are the people she was in touch with who were physically interacting with her during the treatment time regarding the election paper the thumb impression was attested by me myself and dr babu abraham were in the room our kai regaye attest seidha naan அதற்கு சாட்சியாக இருந்தவர் டாக்டர் பாபு தான் இருபத்தேழு பத்து ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினாறு அன்று அந்த நிகழ்வு நடந்தது ஐ ரெட் அவுட் தி லெட்டர் ஃப்ரம் தி எலெக்ஷன் கமிஷன் டு ஹர் அண்ட் சின்ஸ் தேர் வாஸ் அவர் கையில் ஐவி ஃப்ளூயிட் சென்று கொண்டிருந்ததால் அதில் கையெழுத்து போட சிரமம் இருந்ததால் கையும் வீக்கமாக இருந்ததால் அது சாத்தியமாக இல்லை என்பதால் அவரது கைரேகை பதிவு செய்யப்பட்டது அதை நான் அட்டஸ் செய்தேன் அதற்கு சாட்சியாக டாக்டர் பாபு என்று அவரோடு இருந்தார் நான் அவரோடு பேசினேன் So there's no there was, there was no um, no amputation at all no and the marks on the cheeks um I, I'm I'm not no aware amputation. precisely what you're talking about what I will say is that critically ill patients often have some markings on their face um no I, because of the tapes used no, to tighten no, but i was not there no. so i will pass that question over sir there was no amputation done sir to your question no transplantation two questions that you asked avangalukku endha vida amputation ku kaal eduthargala endru ungal sandeham illai avar iru kaalgalodu dhan irundhar no transplantation done sir sir Sir, 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 sir. That is secondary to embalming that was done to her. A professor of uh, anatomy, Professor Sudha Seshan is also here. She will answer your question on that. Madam, I request you to kindly come to the stage. Madam. Embalming was done. Embalming was done.
ஜெயலலிதா அவங்களுடைய உடலை பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டதா எப்பொழுது பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டது எப்பொழுது பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டது அதற்கான காரணம் என்ன ஐந்தாம் தேதி பண்றதுக்கான காரணம் என்ன கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் ஒன் பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டதா ஆமாம் பதப்படுத்தப்பட்டது ஐந்தாம் தேதி இரவு அதாவது ஐந்திலிருந்து ஆறாம் தேதி காலை அந்த டுவெல் டுவெண்ட்டி மிட் நைட் டுவெல் டுவெண்ட்டிக்கு எம்பாமிங் ப்ரொசீஜர் தொடங்கியது ஒரு பதினஞ்சு நிமிஷம் அந்த ப்ரொசீஜர் நடந்தது கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் டூ அதுக்கு என்ன காரணம் அப்படின்னு கேட்டீங்க இல்லையா ஏன் அதை செய்யணும் அப்படின்னு யூஸ்வலாக ஒரு விஐபி டெத் அப்படிங்கும்போது பொதுமக்கள் அஞ்சலிக்காக அந்த பாடி வெளியில் வைப்பாங்க அப்படி வெளியில் வைக்கும்போது நம்ம சீதோஷ்ண நிலைமையில் அந்த பாடி கெட்டு போகிறதுக்கான ஒரு நிலை உண்டு அண்ட் சுற்றி நிறைய பேர் வரும்போது நீங்கள் எல்லாரையும் கண்ட்ரோல் பண்ண முடியாது பல பேர் வருவாங்க பல பேர் வரும்போது எல்லாருக்கிட்ட இருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த எல்லாரும் அங்கே சுற்றி நடக்கும்போது தேர் கேன் பி ஸ்மெல் இல்லை அவங்க கொண்டு வரக்கூடிய டஸ்ட் அதனால் வரக்கூடிய கண்டாமினேஷன் அந்த மாதிரி சில பிரச்சனைகள் வரும் அதை அவாய்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்காகத்தான் விஐபி டெத்தில் யூஸ்வலி வென் த பாடி இஸ் பிளேஸ்ட் ஃபார் பப்ளிக் ஹோமேஜ் எம்பாமிங் இஸ் டன் அண்ட் த சேம் ப்ரொசீஜர் வாஸ் கேரிட் அவுட் ஹியர் ஆல்சோ சார் எம்பாமிங் ஃபார் எம் ஜி ராமச்சந்திரன் ஃபார்மர் சீஃப் மினிஸ்டர் பண்ணியிருக்கு சார் இன்ஃபேக்ட் த சேம் இன்ஸ்டிடியூட் ஆஃப் அனாட்டமி மெட்ராஸ் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் இந்த ஃபார்மர் சீஃப் மினிஸ்டர் மேடம் ஜெயலலிதாக்கு எம்பாம் பண்ண அதே இன்ஸ்டிடியூஷன்லேருந்து ஆஃப்கோர்ஸ் அப்போ இருந்த டீம் அப்போ இருந்தவங்க ரிட்டையர் ஆயிட்டாங்க இதே இன்ஸ்டிடியூட் தான் அப்பவும் எம்பாம் பண்ணித்து மேடம் லெட் மீ பி வெரி வெரி கிளியர் ஆன் தேட் வென் எம்பாமிங் வாஸ் டன் தனியாக அந்த த்ரீ டாட்ஸ் ஐ டோன்ட் ரிமெம்பர் சீயிங் ஐ டிட் நாட் சீ தேர் வர் ஓன்லி எக்கிமாட்டிக் ஸ்பாட்ஸ் அதாவது ஒருத்தங்க பெட்டில் ரொம்ப நாள் இருக்கும்போது அந்த ஒரு சின்னதாக டீகலரேஷன் இருக்கும் அந்த மாதிரி எக்கிமாட்டிக் ஸ்பாட்ஸ் தான் இருந்தது வாட் கம்ஸ் அவுட் ஆன் த பப்ளிக் மீடியா த சோஷியல் மீடியா ஐ ஹவ் நாட் சீன் பிகாஸ் ஐ வாஸ் த பர்சன் ஹூ வாஸ் தேர் வென் தி எம்பாமிங் வாஸ் பர்ஃபார்ம்ட் போகும்போது எங்கெல்லாம் ஹோல்ஸ் இருக்கோ அங்கெல்லாம் இஃப் தி டிஷ்யூ இஸ் வெரி பேட் இஃப் த டிஷ்யூ இஸ் டீஜெனரேட் ஆர் சம்திங் லைக் தட் இட் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் ஊசிங் அவுட் நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா மேடமோட பாடியில் அந்த நாஸ்ட்ரல்ஸில் கூட ஊஸ் இல்லை அதனால் இது எதுக்கு சொல்கிறேன்னா ஒரு பெரிய ஹோல் நீங்கள் சொல்கிற மாதிரி அங்கே ஒரு ஹோல் இருந்ததுன்னா டெஃபினட்டாக அதில் வந்து ஊஸ் வரும் அண்ட் தெர் வாஸ் நோ ஊசிங் எனி வே வி வர் ஏபிள் டு கம்ப்ளீட் த ப்ரொசீஜர் இன் ஃபிஃப்டீன் மினிட்ஸ் டைம் பிகாஸ் வி ஹேட் அன் ஆட்டோமேட்டட் பம்பிங் மெஷின் 15 minutes நாங்க அந்த ஃபோர்ஸ்ல பம்ப் பண்ணும்போது எங்கேயுமே எக்ஸ்ட்ராடினரி ஊஸ் இருக்கவே இல்லை எக்ஸப்ட் ஃபார் அ நார்மல் மியூகோசல் லீக் விச் இஸ் அ வெரி நார்மல் திங் ஃபார் எனி இண்டிவிஜுவல் அதனால எங்கேயுமே வந்து ஒரு தேவையில்லாத ஓட்டை இல்லை வேற ஏதோ இடத்துல கட் பண்ணி திருப்பி ஒட்ட வச்சது அந்த மாதிரியான சுச்சுவேஷன்ஸ் இருக்கிறதுக்கு வாய்ப்பு இல்லை ஃப்ரம் தி ஸ்டாண்ட் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் எம்பாமிங் ஐம் கிவிங் யூ திஸ் you said about why it, uh, why is this press conference happening after 2 months I just want to ask uh, were you asked by someone to hold a press conference because this was the thing that a lot of the media most of the media was asking for you know coming out and being transparent about what is happening or at least somebody from the medical team coming and talking to us so was this press conference today very specifically mentioned to you or was it just on your own capacity that you're coming out giving this uh, my question is also something related to that i think you can okay, plug okay so yeah. we'll hear yeah. both of them uh, please it was earlier told that uh, the press conference is being held to dispel the uh, rumors about our uh, uh, former chief minister's death but if you if you had thought it was so important why didn't you hold this conference and wh- why were you waiting for his arrival for two months if you had thought that it was so important you could have asked him to come to chennai even before this and could have had all the rumors dispelled even before this is there any political pr- there is no political pressure to conduct this press meet but your question sir can, can i can i make it clear that this press meet is not called by apollo hospital dr rs sarbil nadathapadugendra oru nigalvu dr to put in can i yes so, so from my point of view 
clearly this, this press conference has been facilitated by the government. Um, and I have always been willing to come and participate in a discussion such as this within the limits of confidentiality that I have already alluded to. Because to be honest, it's been, it's been quite upsetting to watch from a distance many of the more extreme rumors that have been going around about things that apparently happened. And so I had imagined it would always be necessary at some point to try and dispel that. And some of you may know that even back at home, I and my office and even my home have been uh, approached about some of these issues, which is unfortunate. Um, as to why it's happening now, this is when the government have chosen to facilitate it and when we're available. Uh, and I've been asked to be here, so here I am. Doctor, to put an end to all these controversies, why don't you release the CCTV footages? So, again, um, the detail of that is, is, would clearly be a response for Apollo, but in the general sense, firstly, you do not have CCT in patients' rooms. Secondly, any information that is there, even if it were to exist, which it doesn't, um, you would never release. I have explained to you, I think, that you do not take photographs of critically ill patients. Can you imagine if you or anyone you loved or cared about critically ill in an intensive care unit or recovering was being photographed and their images shared, how would they or you feel? We just do not do that. And I, do, I cannot understand why anybody here thinks it would be a reasonable thing to do. What was the problem she was suffering from? And what was the treatment? Okay. Uh, so, our Comorbid condition, our like circulatory irritation, rata kodi pirunda dalum. The noy, very very well, parayo kudiye. Wipe bold undi and travel sonna. See, our like she was in uncontrolled diabetes mellitus order under danga with the septicemia. Doctor Babu here can explain it. The best of treatment has been given to her in ICU with the critical care that was given to her. Our like enna. வைத்தியரீதியில் <laughs> She went in for various cascading events. Saga, one run male, one raga, the male area. Sir, he is asked why no photographs have been released of the patient, Madam Chief Minister. It is absolutely not normal practice to photograph people who are critically ill in hospital or any patient for that matter and publish that sort of private and detailed information about someone. It would be regarded, is regarded, as an intrusion on their confidentiality and their dignity. And uh, where I practice in London, it would absolutely never be the case that we would allow photography of any critically ill patient and publish their photograph unless they specifically wanted that to happen. And clearly someone who is unwell isn't in a position to make such a decision. And then later, when they recover, then it's a matter for them, but one respects their wishes. So in the general sense, that's why this is not done. But uh, Dr. Babu, you may want to comment because you were involved. Please let him finish. <laughs> Doctor, you said she was critically ill, but all along we were, uh, we were told, the media and the outside world was told that she was improving dramatically. You said she was critically ill, but all along that was not the picture that was given or presented. Can you please clarify why? Both of us are doctors here. We are not policy makers. If you can ask us medical questions, we'll be happy to answer. Unfortunately, we will not be able to answer those questions which are hospital policy or whatever, whoever the policy makers are. Please ask us medical questions. We'll try to answer, as Dr. Uh, Professor Richard Deal said, within the purview of her confidentiality. And you know there's a court case going on, so I will not be able to uh, you know, uh, divulge everything. I can't answer that question of yours because it's not mine. Can I ask uh, answer Sam, please? So uh, Sam, um, uh, she 
I cannot give you for a finer details or time uh, or dates because I don't have uh, records with me and I'm, my memory is not that good. So she, uh, she, when she came to us to the emergency room, she was drowsy, but with treatment appropriate, she woke up, she was talking, she was eating, she was interacting with officials for about a week, I would say, where, by which time, because her sepsis was slowly, you know, making her tired, her breathing was getting worse, she got intubated. That is, a tube was put into her throat so that she will be connected into a big ventilator. So once she was put on a big ventilator, then she we had to give her sleeping medicines because otherwise it becomes com uncomfortable for her. So from that time onwards, for about 10 days, she was on sleeping medicines and not able to communicate continuously. But when we uh, remove the sedation and wake her up, she's able to communicate by signs, hands, because there's a tube in the throat. After that, we did a procedure called tracheostomy. I again can't remember the date of my head. After the tracheostomy, usually we patients come off the sleeping medicine. They are fully awake. From that time onwards, I would say it would be about 10 to 12 days after we put did the intubation, she was again up, awake and appropriate and communicating by sign languages and we can lip read her. So most of the medical personnel could understand what she is saying by lip reading. That's all. And Sir? you'll re So what's the reason for a sudden cardiac arrest and uh, did she underwent a physiotherapy actually? Because many of the press release quoted that she's a uh, taking physiotherapy and uh, you are telling that uh, she is physically ill and uh, she is giving only sign languages. So how come she took physiotherapy? That all I have to know. So I think it's, it, it's worth understanding a little bit more about what happens in these sorts of disease processes because a lot of the misunderstanding I think is because people just don't, and why would you, understand how things work. So when someone has had this sort of illness and is on the ventilator and then is um, has been stabilized and is on treatment. The process we follow is we wake them up, we try and reduce the support from the ventilator, and we start physiotherapy. We try and start the rehabilitation process as quickly and as soon as we possibly can, because people who are sick lose muscle bulk, they lose strength, and so on. So you want to have them working as much as you can to try and encourage that improvement process. Now, that's managed by the physiotherapists, the bedside nurses, and to some extent the doctors are involved, although it isn't our primary skill set, and supported by the dietitian and all the other members of the multidisciplinary team who help with this. And so all these things go along at the same time. Physiotherapy isn't an all or nothing thing. It starts off very gently. There's that balance between not overstressing the patient, but at the same time making sure they're moving forwards and they're starting to regain a bit of strength. So that's exactly what happened here in a very focused and skillful and meticulous way. And so she was gradually getting stronger. So to begin with, someone is lying in a bed and a little later they can sit and they can sit on the side of the bed with support, then with less support, then with no support, then they stand a little bit and they take a few steps. This is the process and that process was really going on from very early in her treatment all the way th through to her tragic collapse and completely unexpected collapse at the end. Now, why did that happen? We don't know, except we have a lady of more mature years with chronic diseases, hypertension and diabetes that make you vulnerable to these things, and with recovering sepsis, and who'd had an infection on her heart. So unfortunately, a sudden heart attack or stroke or some other event like this can, and tragically did in this case, happen. Sir, was December 4th, the first time 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 the first the potassium level was not high on the day of arrest. Uh, it was checked in the morning, it was not arrest. She had a sudden cardiac arrest. I a team uh, of doctors who were taking care of that was there in the room when it happened. So it was a witnessed cardiac arrest. It was not a non-witnessed, it was a witnessed cardiac arrest. Sir, in the middle of the day, there was a lot of people who were in the middle of the day. 
அவங்க வந்து அவசர உயர் சிகிச்சை பிரிவில் இருந்து தனி அறைக்கு மாற்றப்பட்டதா சொல்லப்படுது அந்த தனி அறையில அனைத்து உபகரணங்களும் வைக்கப்பட்டிருந்தாங்க இருந்தன நடந்தது <laughs> and subsequently only she was shifted to the ot around 9:30 pm all resuscitative measures were done at the bedside in that room all facilities were available in that room sir idu irandu maadangalaga irandu maadangal sendru yen sandhikrom endru kettingu there are a lot of rumors that are going around to quell it ivar oru nigalvukaga inga chennai vara vendiya soolnalai irundathu ivar most critical time la ivar avangalukku vaidhyam pannadanal ivar irundhu seiyum bodhu irukala endradhukku dhaan idu to quell all the rumors that are going around dr richard so at what time and that is around the expert is around so we thought this will be the opportune time in the time correct i irukum appo dr dr you said you were always willing to come for a press for such a press conference and the government called you now uh, we are asking you this question repeatedly because there is a change in the political situation in the state right now so uh, we just wanted to know if you were willing earlier to or you were available only now can you please clarify that my availability is limited um it isn't possible for me to to come just whenever but clearly i would make time to come uh as soon as possible when asked as to precisely why this is the time that i've been asked that's a matter for others other than i think that clearly the feeling that these matters needed to be clarified after an appropriate period of time after the initial grieving and mourning period had passed more than that i can't say i'm afraid i am not as you know a native of your state and the subtleties of some of the things that go on here are not things i pretend to understand uh,